It's all good. All good. We'll just say when you leave that the pirate knocks you out or something. Yeah. Where did I put you guys? On the other side. Or you stay on the ship and guard it. Have you guys on the ship? There we are. No, for fuck's sake, stupid mouse. Jimmy's on the chrome nest. Keep him out of the fight for now. Fuck you. Alright. Jimmy's up there. Why is there two Jimmy's? Maybe the DM god is drunk. I'm seeing two Jimmy's. I'm not even going to wrap my head around the logic of that. <laughs> okay, so we got everyone? Ah. Greetings to the extra person. Oh, I got a phone for a reason. Hello. Hello. Okay, Patrick. Are you the one of the new guys? Yes. Oh, you're the monk, so you're not one of the new guys. Right. Yes. You have a giant martial artist joining the group which is reflavoring psionics. And then you have um, one of the members of the Vivi Smoke um, family joining your crew. Yes. His uh, powers are. He's using an Arcana Sky class and he's um, reflavoring it with the battle suit. Yes. And never techie. Eh. It shall get interesting when devil fruits come into play. Yes. Yes. Uh, hang on. That better? There's a drawing too, so I can just go beep, beep. It doesn't align. <sighs> so you guys find yourselves sailing within the actual um, sea. You're heading off to the next town to meet Buggy the Clown and to collect the map for the Grand Line. 
you have had a interesting voyage so far, a nice drinking couple of nights. The captain and his girlfriend have locked themselves in the treasure room. Jimmy is bawling his eyes out because he's going, Oh no! The rum's gone! And someone cut the ladder and I'm stuck in the crow's nest! And you guys are doing what you guys usually do. Um, feel free to roleplay. When you placed your ear... When you place your ear against the door to listen in to the captain, you hear him violently speaking in his sleep going, I, When my crew is asleep, I'm going to skin them for meat. Mm, yum, 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 yum. <laughs> Yes. The ferry is currently asleep. Vincent? Is that the ferry? Okay, the ferry comes out of the sleeping docks and sees the monk breaking shit. Feel free to roleplay. The monk seems to take a look at the fairy and sees a opportunity target practice for some reason. Right. Meet up. 
Great account. We got everyone on? You guys fighting? Yes. everyone Okay, so you hear Jimmy go, run ho! Up across! You go, you, you're gonna fire cannons at the actual um, land? I don't know, he said something about Land ho, means land near. It says, and uh, it, it probably best to take cover for some reason. There seems to be a cannonball flying towards us. Oh wait, no, it's a bit off course. What do you use which to do? Awesome. Okay, so the cannonball lands in the ocean, just off course of you, and does... doesn't do a normal cannonball splash, but it does 70 damage to the ocean. Explosive cannonball. Explosive cannonball. Yes, it has like a small mushroom cloud coming from the ocean, and you're just looking at it going, Lucky it didn't hit us. Oh, 
<laughs> okay. Uh, giant player. <laughs> We're gonna skip to you. You wake up in a pet shop. So there's all rubber toys and pet food and all that around, seeds, birds and stuff. And on your pants, there seems to be this miniature dog, white thing, picture representing it. Ignore the giant lion with the man on him. He's not there yet. Um, he seems to be trying to tug at you as if to move you out of the shop. What do you wish to do? Huh? I thought I moved the players over there. Hello? Yeah. Smoking blades too drunk. So um which one's which one's the giant player? Right. Okay. Yep. I would just give him control of the token. <laughs> yes, <laughs> not really normal cannonballs to create a big explosion like that. Okay, when 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 Gorat's ready. <laughs> it didn't really seem like they were aiming for you guys. Just firing cannonballs into the ocean. Especially nuclear ones? Okay. Can we hear the giant in the pet food shop? He's the size of a normal man. At the moment. Goliath Lodge! Sort of. Something like that. Is that the dress Rosa are? Uh, yeah. Hmm. The one Luffy fights. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, something like that. 
You'd look at him and you'd think that he's like a big musclier man, but he's really a giant. He's got like special martial arts. Can we hear the Gorats? The Gorats. Sounds like something from Dr. Seuss. Okay, moving on. We will go to, towards Sam while Gorat's fixing himself. We could do, uh, like, typing to see what you're doing for the session. And then fix it later. No, it doesn't have to be quickly. Not using a computer? Uh, Roll 20s work. Uh, ah, okay. Just do typing for now. So, uh, Gorat the Giant, what are you doing at the moment? You've got a. You've just woken up in a pet food shop, half drunk, and you've got a little puppy dog. Uh, chewing at your clothing, trying to drag you out of the shop. <laughs> yes, it is very much a blur. You uh, get up and stumble outside while the puppy dog lets go of you and is still barking at you. As you get up, you see a man on a giant lion slowly walking towards the shop. You should have control of your token too. There is no two giants there. <laughs> you, you hear you hear the little man on the actual um, giant lion go. Ah, oh, Moji, you seem to be very hungry. Look, there's a pet food shop over there. And the lion just slowly starts walking towards the shop. The dog comes out and it starts ignoring you and starts barking at the lion. What do you want to do? 
sorry, dog, you're on your own. <laughs> you're staying next to the shop. Uh, the guy gets off the line. It's like, ah, oh, sweet, a little puppy. There is no beast that I, the moji, what is it? Kubiji, the actual beast tamer, cannot tame. He goes down to put his um, hand to pat the dog, and his, the dog's just like, ah! He starts waving his hand in panic. Uh, what do you want to do? I'll step away from the entrance and watch it. I'm guessing you have pet food. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you got bounties. <laughs> it means a pirate. Yeah, well, yeah. you're still pirates. <laughs> hey man, sorry to bother, but what day is it? Uh, the guy doesn't seem to be listening to you as he's got a dog crunching on his hand at the moment. The, the guy picks up the dog and grabs it by the scuff and throws it into the pet shop. And then jumps up onto the lion. And says, right, Moji! Time to feast! And seems to be ignoring you, the giant. And starts ramsacking the actual um, pet shop, like, smashing it up. Yes. <laughs> you uh you also get a memory that your friend is located uh just a bit over on the other side of town. Okay, let's lead to Sam. And introduce him. I have a valuable surprise for Sam. Okay. So. Um. By the way, you guys have probably um docked, and you're already on your way, figuring out where that cannonball came from. Maybe it's a clue to where the map is. You've uh, pinpointed the location and you're currently over the, going over there while some of the actual crew members are guarding the ship. Okay, Sam. You find yourself in a concrete cage with iron bars and the entire buggy crew looking at you with Buggy the Clown behind a cannon pointed at you and Kobuchi by his side. Yes. You still have your suit on you. And... Uh, have I given you control of your token? No. Uh, which one are you? Vincent D? Chi Chi, right. Is that your character's name? Where the control by? <laughs> okay. And save changes. 
You hear Buggy go? <laughs> You're finally awake! The main attraction of the actual... ...of the actual... ...show. <laughs> this is your trial! What words have you got to say for yourself? So, he goes, You are guilty of stealing my treasure! Oh, Gronk! And making fun of my nose! And for being a flashy asshole! He, he points at you as his hand is coming off him. To test the action, to show you what your punishment will be, I shall test this cannon! And he points it to another part of town and just fires off the cannonball. Um, giant! As you're looking up at the sky trying to figure out what day it is, you see a little red cannonball flying towards your way. What do you want to do? That note the giant lion and the man are running for their lives now. Okay, so while they're running, you're running behind them for, f like, behind 40 feet. Okay, so as you guys keep running away, um, the blast, suddenly the cannonball hits the ground and this, this big red explosion takes over. And what used to be that town, the dogs probably just smoke right now. <laughs> so the dog's dead. So it creates this, like, crater and you, uh... Uh, both hit by the edge of the explosion. Can I have like a reflex save from you or a deck save? Awesome. Um, you take half the damage. Have you got an evasion? You take 13 damage. Awesome. The uh, lion and the guy seem to be knocked out for some reason. Uh, what do you wish to do? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, the giant's a bit of a coward. <laughs> oh, God. As you're taking cover, a young girl with a sack of treasure seems to be walking 
seems to be um, walking about a distance away. Where have I left? Come on. Don't think I have her here. Give me a minute. The first mate saying that he's scared for the captain. <laughs> oh yes, that's right. There we are. So you see, so you see this uh, giant. You see this um, girl running towards you. And she's got like three pirates chasing her, and she's got a stack of treasure, a sack of treasure on her. And she she just runs into you, and she's like, "Ah, oh, hey, boss. I suppose you could deal with these guys." Given your nature, these free pirates look very scary. I'm going with it. <laughs> I'm going. Oh no, 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 boss, boss, that'll be the buggy pirates. Look, you're very strong and you're very courageous. I'm going to take this treasure back to our ship, and, well, you can take care of them. Uh, the three guys are looking at you. You don't seem so tough. <laughs> so you got three threatening pirates. Three threatening pirates. And a young young lady holding a sack of treasure. So now she's just running the other way, away from you, while the pirates are now looking at you. <laughs> um, so, uh, what do you want to do? You gonna stand and fight, or are you gonna run away? Okay. Sweet. So let's start the initiative round. Roll me an initiative check. I suppose. Uh, I'll just get there. Plus two, right. It should be pretty quick. Right, they're going first. So they are going to take... Uh, they draw their swords or clubs or whatever they're wielding. And they go to attack you first. Fifteen. Eight. And thirteen for your AC. So, do they hit Gar? Okay, so none of them hit. Um, now you get to attack them. Okay. 
Okay, Garrett. Your turn. OG. No, no, OG. Take your time. Okay. Holy shakes. Okay, so as your fist comes down on the first guy, if I can, guys, you tend to knock him out and he goes flying across the floor. The other two take a look at you and they're like, uh, yeah, we're going to go the other way. <laughs> and they start running away. Weapon? <laughs> Holy shakes. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> You've killed one of them and the other two are running, shitting their pants, right, running for their lives. <laughs> Do you choose to follow the girl? Do you uh, choose to follow the strange girl that called you boss? Hello? Do you choose to follow the girl who called your boss? Okay, I think he's uh, AFK, so we'll... Yes, okay. Awesome. Okay, moving on to the next scene. Uh, you guys have been walking through the town, um, and Vivi, the one, the Vivi smokes. So the Sam's character is still in the cage. You guys are walking down. You see Sam's character in the cage, and um, you see a whole bunch of pirates with who to guess? Buggy the clown. And Kubiji. You guys are staying hidden or? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you see Buggy the Clown point the cannon towards the guy in the cage. All the other guys seem to take cover. He puts the aim, no, knowing how good of a marksman um, Austin's character is, he, Austin knows that he's pointing towards the centerpiece where the cage is going to be like on the edge of the explosion. It's going to kill the guy inside the cage. You guys seem to be perfectly aligned to the actual blast radius. He lights the match and Austin knows it's going to take at least one minute for the cannonball to come out. What do you guys want to do? And I have an attack roll? Was it 
Was that a critical? Why? Who sent the alien language? Who sent the alien language? Okay, um, with that, it explodes. Killing. Yeah, it's very potent. All these guys are dead. You what? You guys are just briefly out of the blast range. For some reason. Yeah, I know. Give me a minute. So you just killed all the pirate dudes. The guy in the cage, I uh, don't know how Sam's reaction is to this. And I'm gonna roll the damage. Set the DC at 20. Alien language... 63, holy fuck! Uh, I want that one. Seven, eight, right. Uh, make it DC twenty. No, no, no. I'm ro rolling for buggy in that. Eighteen, right? Buggy fails. Oh, that copy. Oh, hang on. No, plus eight, plus seven. Right, they both pass. 31 damage each. Yeah, Buggy had some pretty dangerous cannonballs. So which means that all the other cannonballs went boom as well. <laughs> no more cannonballs. 31. And both prone, and given the fact you've just destroyed his cannon, special cannonballs, a fight's about to start out. Um, so, Giant is following the actual people. He's out to fight. <laughs> DC 10. Buggy. Uh, 
actually make that 19. 24. 24 and 22. Somehow these guys are still alive, as well. Everyone's got their initiative. Okay, so one is Kibiki is eight. Kibiki, which one are you again? Sam. Okay. Sam's token, I don't think, is on there. Brain can go bye bye for this session. We have Austin's character, the monk, and both the and the fairy at the moment. Oh yeah, that's right. Yep, 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 yep. There we are. Mm. Awesome. Has everyone set their initiative? I've still got two twenty fours on Austin and Barry. Is it there now? Do I have to bin the tokens and then add them again? Really? Turn. Add turn. Add turn. Okay, so everyone's checking. Fuck, the monk's going first. So, you see Buggy the Clown and Kobe Chi, which are both collapsed on the ground for some reason. They look like they're fainted. What do you want to do? Okay. DC 15. You rolled a griddle? Okay, so you break one of the iron bars. Uh, he's pretty skinny. Awesome. On his turn, he'll be able to move out. Uh, is that your turn? Uh, so, you guys have never seen a Devil Fruit user before. Suddenly, the 
body parts of Buggy the Clown, just all floating apart from each other, all separated, tend to put themselves back together. He seems to have a very angry look on his face. He's like, Kibichi, get up! And Kibichi gets up as well, both spending their move actions. And they seem to take their second move actions to start moving towards his. Yes. I'll be right. <laughs> I'll figure that out later. Ooh, and that's the turn for now. Very, your turn. When, when he was deconstructing himself, you saw both his hands holding two of his crewmates. And Kirby Tube was doing the same. So, they had, they had cover. No. <laughs> what do you want to do? Yep. Twenty one, you uh where are you moving to? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Should have control of your token. Yep. Sorry about that. Um okay. Is that your turn? Okay. Yep. And Austin, you're yeah, you you're already out in the open. Um, as well as the guy in the, the cage. Okay. Thanks. No idea. <laughs> Talk of the devil. It's now Austin's turn. doesn't seem to be listening. Uh, roll me a diplomacy check, actually. DC 30. Yep. Uh, 
there's still a five percent chance. Okay, so he's not listening to you, and he's gonna keep going towards you. Buggy or Kojibi? I critical the musket shot. Okay, he uses quick uh, split split quick escape. He splits his body parts apart and the shot just goes through. Keeping this guy alive so he can kill him? Oh my god, I need some music. Okay, so next in the initiative line we have Vivi Smoke, or whatever it is, Mr. Orange Smoke. What do you just want to do, Sam? Yeah, she's here. A man in tattered robes who looks like he's half drunk actually broke the iron bars for you and has um, led you to set. Go free. Plus eight to touch. I'd say that would be a miss as he uses his blade to deflect your shot. You're firing a gun? Yes. Okay. And he seems to set his eyes as your opponent. Gotcha. Um. It now comes back to the monk's turn. Bren Brendan, what are you doing? Fairy's just hiding. Okay, so is that your turn or are you going to do something else? Okay, it now comes back to the enemy's turn. Buggy is going to move towards the monk because. Uh, no, move towards you. Um, Austin? So, one, two, three, four. Five. Actually, you know what? He's going to charge. Oh, 
Sort of. And he's going to attack you. He does? Ah, okay, gotcha. Uh, it's a plus nine. Does a... Nineteen hit your arm plus. Oh, good. Awesome. You take seven points of damage. And now Kobichi's turn. He is going to charge at the monk and Vivi Smack. And he's going to attack. Sweet, somehow it has higher attack points. <laughs> the sixteen versus AC against the monk. Okay. Okay, so, and that's their turns for now. Coming back to the fairy. You're perfectly, you're perfectly hidden and you have the element of surprise on your hands. Uh, yeah, you also will have advantage on your attack rolls, or why not? Which means roll twice and take the highest. So Buggy's taking a neck 2 to AC. Awesome. Oh goodies, what are you attacking with? Longsword, and due to the fact that you're actually surprise attacking him, he won't be able to chop chop escape. So you get to roll damage! <laughs> Yep. Okay. Twenty eight damage. Buggy is still standing. 
He, he's, you seem to have got him, but he quick escaped to get any vital points. And he is not bloody yet. Yeah. Yes. Austin! Your turn! Currently, he's focused on both, so you don't have a slight advantage. You need surprise for that. <laughs> okay, you gonna try to grab him? Make me an attack roll? What are you going to try to do? Okay. Ah, gotcha. Piercing damage? Yeah, it's a syringe. Okay, so the initial... Yeah, it would have been an auto miss anyway. Slashing and piercing damage he's automatically immune to from any attacks of that type. Yeah, yeah, but the needle itself would be a type of attack which you would be immune to. It's a weird devil fruit. <laughs> Very weird devil fruit. Okay. Okay. And Vivi Smoke, uh, Chichi, it's now your turn. I've given Buggy a 50% chance of um, succeeding against any other types of attacks, but with slashing and piercing, it is actually immune. And any attacks flavoured like that. <laughs> 21? Okay, uh. The nineteen twenty one hit rolled a nineteen. <laughs> uh, you can roll again for um, advantage if you want. AC, yep. So the nineteen hits. And the other attacks tend to sneak. Okay, so you only got using one attack. Yes. Nineteen hits. Rolls for damage. No damage? Awesome. You don't have sneak attack or anything? Ah, gotcha. Uh, yep. He's bloody. 
Um, and it will now come down to the monk's turn. Right. Is that a special feature? Ah, uh, okay. Gotcha. Ah, uh, yes, both of those attacks hit. So, 11 damage? Shakes. Still standing in the fight, still looking a bit beat up from you guys. Uh, which means we roll back around to Buggy's turn. Buggy's going to use one of his special attacks. Split, split, tornado. His body parts split into a whole lot. It's sort of like the split, split carnival where you, like confuses his enemies um, and I just want to Settings, can you guys see that? Legacy lighting, GM notes, details, um, advanced save, save settings, cancel, can't find advanced. I don't see it. Oh, yes, right, yep, I see it. There we are. Save changes. Now can everyone see? Alright, so all the body parts are flying within that sphere of um, zone. This will grant Buggy and his allies um, advantage. And can I have a reflex save from everyone against Buggy's attack roll? No, not the ally. So 27 to DC. Yeah, deck save. Reflex save. Up. 
Nat 20! <laughs> Are you even in the zone? Yeah, you... Okay, so... Does not hit the fairy. Actually, fairy's probably going to take half damage from this. Um, yeah, so the body parts are smashing into your heads, knocking you, and di distracting you as well as. I uh, just need to figure out how many D6s this is. I may as well make the daggers D6. So we go 1, 2, 3 for sneak attack, 76 damage. Plus modifiers. Okay, rolling damage. That is thirty four damage and half if you succeeded. It's basically a weapon attack. Yes. And the rest of you? Yes. Okay, has everyone got the plus 20 HP? I oh, know. I'm asking the rest. Okay, so... Who else is... Who else is down? Okay, so we go back to... Go back to initiative. And it now comes to Kobichi's turn. And given he has advantage on the actual... T Hack rolls. First, he's going to let's see. Breathe fire on Vivi Spoke and the ferry. Can I have a DC? Fire. Yes, fire. Can I have a DC 15 Dex or reflex save from you guys? So he takes a swig of a bottle and just breathes fire out of his mouth. Twelve and CG uh, twenty-seven, right? So the damage for that will be five D six fire damage. Twenty-six or thirteen if you got half. Um, don't worry, if you all die, I'm going to leave it on the cliffhanger. Um. <laughs> uh. 
His body parts are all flying over the place at the moment. I think he can. I'll double check that later. Um, he has a certain reach that he can get up to, but he can float his body parts. Okay, his feet well, can only... he has to stay on the ground. Um, next he will ha Okay, that was a minor action, so he is now going to take a stab at the monk. With his bastard sword. 22 versus AC? And because of the thingy, he also gets his sneak attacks, so that's 1d4 plus 1d10 plus 3, it's 9 plus 2d6. Okay. Plus another 9 damage. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this is not looking good for you guys. Um, I know. I know. I know. As I said, you'll be left on a cliffhanger if this actually comes to fruition. To a 2pk. Uh, Fairy, your turn. What do you want to do? Two of your allies are dropped. You're gonna, you're gonna take buggy on one by one. Right. <laughs> right. So. Yep. Okay. Eleven. Right. Yep. And you're going to start flying towards your ship. Right. So you've just used your move action. Do you want to use your action to attack or? Ah, okay, yep, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yep, yep. Uh, death saving throw from Austin's character. Yep, that's one success. And uh, now we have Vivi, uh, Sh Shiki's character. Sounds like a Chinese name. <laughs> Oh yes, gotcha. Right. What's that? Ki Siki. 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 Alrighty, so what do you want to do? Yep. Yep. A 23 hits, uh, there was a second attack, the 8 will miss, yep. Okay, so roll for damage, uh, yep, 3 damage, awesome. Sorry, gotta remember that. Still alive. Eat some some tough cookies. Okay, uh, monk. Can I have a death saving throw? Yep. Okay. 
So you're back in the fight? Okay. Yep, gotcha. So now it comes back to Buggy's turn. Buggy, uh, looking at you, Fairy. He, he pulls out his revolver and starts shooting at you. Uh, let's see, disadvantage with a neck five. Not really a touch AC, it's regular AC, 16. Okay. And the carnival is no longer active. Changes because he was distracting himself by shooting you. Uh, let me get rid of that. Save settings. Awesome. And um, we will lead back down to Chibichi, which he changes his opponent to you, Chichi. Uh, he goes to. Uh, he'll swing his blade onto the ground, swinging dust up to you. So can I have a DC 15 port or con save? Oh uh, yeah, it would be a reflex save, I guess. Trying to figure out what type of save that would be. Okay, so the dust fails, but he still goes in for his normal attack too. Okay. So 24 beats 19, so what happens to with the parry? Okay. Twenty-one. And twenty-one hits and six damage. Awesome. Not really the best swordsman. Um, he is still alive. Okay, and fairy's turn. Okay, so that is that your turn, or you want to do something else? Uh, you can drop from a height for free. Okay. 60 feet, I... Yep. Okay. Is that now to Austin's then? Okay. Austin. Okay, another save. Two successful saves. Awesome. 
Um, now we're coming to Kishi's turn. Okay. <laughs> awesome. <coughs> uh, makes it easy as attack rolls. Twenty hits. Five damage. Oh, mess it. Um, now comes to the monk's turn. Can I have a stealth check? Yep, you are now hiding. Um, now comes the buggy's turn. He's going to use his... You're within 60 feet. Um, he's going to use his chop chop cannon. On... He shoots his hand out at a reasonable speed towards you and he's going to try to attack you. Basically. Only it's got four daggers um, hanging out. So it's going to do 44 damage. Yeah, basically. He's just swinging and sort of flying off and it's going to try to punk you. 90? Does hit? Okay. That will be... There's four daggers there. Plus 16... 44 25 damage Are you still alive or oh, yeah. you're down okay uh, we'll be using the um, 5e death saving throws for this one. Okay, so that would be come to Chubichi's turn. He is going to go. Well, we can't really do anything. Actually, he's going to. Let's see, where's the house? Okay, take care. Monk's hiding. Uh, do we want to leave this on a cliffhanger? Okay. So, Chibichi is uh, the right hand hand of Buggy the Clan because I can't say it right. Is going to ride his unicycle up the building and fly up to the ferry and try to attack him. And then we'll end there. Wait, you're up 180 feet? Okay. So, no, he's not going to do that. Uh, he's going to try to look for the other uh, person. Alright, that's good for a cliffhanger. Um, we'll see what the rest of the crew does when they come to your aid. Alrighty, sticky.